What's going on guys? John here from John's Fishing Channel. Thanks for tuning in. Go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Favorite this video. I'd appreciate that. I'm going to be doing a little fly fishing today uh, for some largemouth bass. Should be a pretty good day of fishing. I think we'll catch a lot of fish, but I thought I'd get out here on one of my last chances to go fishing in northern Wisconsin and uh, do some bass fishing with a fly rod. It's one of my favorite things to do. So I think it's going to be a really, really good day. And sit back and enjoy the fish. Kenobi, you're such a good dog. You look like you're in a movie or something. Put together the rod. It's a little breezy out, about 60, 62 degrees. Water temperatures about 70 degrees. Holy crap, there's some loons. Oh, good old, he's got a horse fly on his face. Poor dog. I don't know if he doesn't see him or what, but that was pretty close. What's up, buddy? Don't mind me. An eagle flying around, or are they looning at me? He was just flapping his wings. I hope he doesn't charge. I wonder if these, they see Thor and they like see him as a predator. I've never seen him do this before. That's kind of cool, though. I'm surprised Kenobi doesn't really care. Oh, of course, right as I get my camera out. He just saw him. What a schmuck. They'll probably pop up next to the boat. All right, so I'm going to use something big and bright today. Probably this this thing's got a propeller on it. I really like that choice of bait. Well, it's a fly, technically. We're switching from lures to flies. Thor, you got to settle down. All right, here we go. I'm using a Sage XP. Uh, it's a number eight. I'll start doing a little bit more fly fishing on my channel, too. I actually have two fly rods now, one trout rod and one bass rod. I'll probably be purchasing a fly fish, uh, saltwater fly fishing rod. At some point, probably switch up flies here in a few minutes if I don't start catching some more stuff. There's one, a little nicer. Strip it in, reel it up, strip it in, reel it up. Got to keep tension on the line or they really do uh, shake the flies out. a nicer fish come to me not bad fish number two a little purple propeller fly and this is the type of uh, fly that you constantly are stripping in and pretty much moving that propeller gives it a little bit extra movement which bass really like but as it falls is usually when they're going to come get it. So it'll fall, you'll strip it, it'll fall, you'll strip it. And you kind of get it to work like this. And that propeller just gives a little bit of shine, a little bit of noise, a little bit of movement. Bass seem to really like that. I could also try a topwater popper. The frogs are out. So that's other, also another choice that I have. Thor, you got to sit down. If I fall out of the boat because of Thor, we're going to have a serious issue. That could be the last video ever for Thor's fishing channel. <laughs> so I kind of just let it fall slowly and slowly work it, work it, work it, work it. I think there's a fish on there. Nope. Ah, get my line all mucked up there. About as much line as I can cast. There we go. See, the problem is when you let that line get out of your hand, just like I did, they get off. Crap, my fault. I should have reeled up the extra line. Rookie mistake. And, you know, fly fishing is a lot more work than regular fishing. You know, they both have their different advantages and disadvantages. One of the advantage, big advantages of fly fishing is bass, uh, as, as a whole, like population of fish species, they see a lot more lures than they do flies, along with pretty much every other type of fish. So. 
you can work a fly and have a little bit better chance of catching fish that are a lot more used to lures uh, because the flies, you know, they look real and it looks like a bug there sitting on the water going through the water. But, uh, you know, lures, some fish are smart to that. Muskie, big muskies in particular know what a bucktail looks like or what a, uh, I got too much line out casting up into the wind. And what a bucktail looks like or what a crankbait looks like or a spinner bait but sometimes a, a fly I mean it just looks so real to them that they can't not eat it and so you'll see sometimes bigger fish on a fly rod than you will other ways around other than casting rod or a spinning rod but they have world record fly rod world records and regular fishing world records so it's definitely i mean there's they they separate the two that in the categories of world record fish so you got to keep that tension uh keep your finger on the line uh, keep tension on the line and we bring the fish in yes yes excellent day Hope I don't hook one of my dogs, that'd be awful. It'd be worse than hooking a person. Got the wind at my back. And you just work the fly back to the boat. It's interesting when you're musky fishing with a fly rod, you have to fish the fly all the way back to the boat because they will wait a long time to actually strike it. Could be a nice day if it wasn't for that wind. And a lot of times you can just let that fly ride the wind and it'll carry it right into its destination. The slower the better. I have a pretty fast cast, but the slower the better. Sometimes I go a little too fast. One of my biggest issues when I'm fly fishing. And you can feel the line behind you. You know, when it straightens out behind you, you'll feel it. And that's when you want to come forward is just right before it loads up. All right, so these are our fly poppers. They're large, they're heavy, they're very hard to throw. Um, but I'll give you guys a little lesson in how to do it. I suppose I should clip that off before I put it away. So my dad's flies, so I have to clip off all the excess line and not leave it on there. Or he gets upset. All right, but you know, these big heavy rods, they're designed for these big heavy flies, so at least, you know, it's not like putting a giant heavy musky lure on a regular fishing rod, because that probably wouldn't work very good. Your line just couldn't handle it and it would break. You put this out there and then you just pop it. Pop it. And if the fish feel like it, they'll come and eat it. Woohoo! coming right for me. I don't know if they're going to be hitting the surface today or not. My intuition tells me no, but again, you just never know unless you try. Nice calm water pocket back there. A little farther back there. I'd like to catch one. Oh, there's one. Oh, I missed him. A little calmer water right there. Bam, there's one. Probably a school of bass over there or something. That's what I like. And strip them in. Not bad. I mean, it's not that big, but I love catching bass on a fly rod. It's just, yeah, it's good entertainment. All right, so let's see if we can pop another one right there. Of course, they just saw their buddy get yanked out of here by this thing. Try and get it to as close as the shore as I can. Yeah, fishy, fishy, fishy. 
There's a log right there. See if we can get the fish to come off of it. Using a Gunnison reel, number four reel today, nice reel. Same rod I was using in that panfish video that I made where I caught and cooked panfish. Not a lot of top water action today, huh? Fish in undercut banks, so it was cranberry bush. And the fish will sit underneath the actual banks, you know, two or three feet and wait for food to come out of the bushes or into the bushes and then they'll ambush it from underneath. There's one. Missed him. Put it back up in there. Nice, got him. A lot of times they'll come back for these flies. Bring them in. There's another fish on the day. There we go. Oh man, I was just about to pick it up and I let it sit there for a while. Probably 10, 20 seconds and then that fish decided that he was going to eat it. This is an excellent spot right here. Come on, fish. That was the perfect cast at the perfect spot. I know you're there. Wow, there's actually three loons out there. That's crazy. Huh. Wonder if they're like having a menage à trois or something. It's French for orgy. So I switched spots on the lake. Went to an area that's not as windy, a little bit more calm. Let's see if we can pull some fish out of here. See, that's bad. You want this to be like this. And then straight up and straight forward. Okay, my line's getting all messed up here. That was terrible. I hooked myself. And when your line gets messed up like mine is, you gotta just get it untangled with your hand. It's the best way. Just like a giant wind knot. Just pull it out. Just like that. That's a bad cast. There we go. Sunfish, something down there chewing on it. Ah. I might have to switch over lures. Go back underwater. I'm definitely not catching as many fish as I want to. All right, so I switched over to just a weighted yellow uh, greenish and white color looking jig and I hope it works all right so first things first is a couple logs right here I'm just gonna throw it off there and let it sink down to the bottom and just kind of strip it back fish on nicer fish nicest fish I've caught all day Nice one, nice one, 13 inches maybe. Well, thanks for watching my fly fishing video today. I had a good time out on the water catching some bass on the fly rod. Didn't catch as many or as big as fish as I would have liked to, but it's that time. I'm gonna wrap up my video. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, favorite this video, and we'll see you next time.